Hello, this is Cherie with Symbol Book bringing you another video. Today, I thought I would do a sew and tell. Um, I'm just basically going to show you all the sewing machines that I've had, um, just to give you a basic idea of some of the mistakes that I made in purchasing machines so that you can um, use this information for when you decide to buy another machine. The first sewing machine that I ever got was an MDECO JA21. I found it off of Craigslist for about $15 and it needed to be serviced. So I figured out how to service that machine and got it up and running. But I discovered that that particular machine was not the machine for me. Uh, the MDECO JA21 had a zigzag needle plate. That zigzag needle plate easily sucks lightweight fabrics down into the uh, plate. So I would have to use tissue paper on the bottom to keep my fabric from getting dragged down into the machine. Um, the other issue I had with the machine was that it was a side needle plate. And that meant that I couldn't use twin needles, which I use a lot because I don't have a cover stitch machine. Um, another thing about a vintage machine is that it doesn't have as good of speed control as newer machines have. Uh, so you really have to know what you're doing when you're running the machine. Um, that's okay for somebody that is an experienced sewer, but not the best for somebody that is a beginner. Um, I also found that uh, my MDECO JE21 takes design cams, uh, which means that the stitches are not built into the machine. So if I wanted to use something other than straight or zigzag, then I needed to go into my drawer, pull out the design cam, put it into the machine and set the machine to sew that particular stitch. And that became a very daunting task once I got more into using um, other stitches for the machine. Uh, strength wise, the machine would not sew through multiple layers of denim, even after changing out the motor and everything. It just wouldn't do it. And I discovered that um, just because a machine is made out of metal doesn't mean that it will sew leather or any other thick materials for that matter. So you really have to do your research before you buy a machine, whether it be old or new. Um, and the basic lesson I took from the MDECO JA21 is that older doesn't always equal better when it comes to sewing machines. Um, the last thing that I would say that I learned is that when you get a vintage sewing machine, you should always make sure that you're getting a main name brand like a Singer or a Kimmore. Um, I wouldn't go for one of the knockoff uh, Japanese class 15 knockoff machines uh, simply because uh, they do take Singer parts. However, it's not like you can just go into Google and type in MDECO JA21 and have all of the proper parts for that machine pop up. Instead, you really have to dig and find which Singer class 15 parts will fit that particular machine. And it can be a bit of a, uh, it can be just a lot of work and um, that's not something that we want to do. So I decided to upgrade machines. And at that time I was watching the Great British Sewing Bee and they were using the Janome Sewers 500. So I just picked up that machine offline. And online it looked like the best machine to purchase because it had four feed dogs, which I thought would mean that it would pull fabric more easily through the machine. Um, it had a one-step buttonhole, unlike my older machine, which didn't have a buttonhole function at all. Um, it was a lightweight machine, and it also was a top loader, which meant that I could look at the bobbin and easily see uh, when it was about to be empty. Um, however, once I got this machine home, about a month into having it, I discovered that I didn't like it. And the reason is because it bounced around a lot and was extremely loud to sew with. Um, and after sewing for about 20 to 30 minutes, I would say, um, the thread would come out of the thread take up lever and cause the, the, um, stitches to start bird nesting underneath the fabric. And I would spend a long time trying to figure out why I was getting a bird nest. And then I would discover that it had just come out of the thread take up lever. And that ended up being what made me sell the machine to someone who needed a mask uh, once the pandemic hit. Um, 
And the lesson I got from the Janome Solus 500 was to always try some a machine before you buy it. Don't just purchase it um, from online if you can't help it. After the fiasco with the Janome 500, I decided that I needed a surgery. So I went on Craigslist and got a Janome um, 3434D um, for $100. Uh, the machine was still in its original packaging. Uh, the lady had virtually never used it. Um, it works just fine. However, um, it takes it does the traditional threading method, um, and it's very time-consuming to rethread the machine. And the uh, tie-on uh, method for it just doesn't work well. Um, for some reason or other, it just doesn't work well to tie on. Um, so I end up having to rethread. Um, also, it's pretty hard to adjust the tension. The book says to start off at three and then to adjust your tension from there. But that has never worked for me. It's been better to just start off the thread tension at zero and to adjust each tension from there. And typically I spend about 30 minutes adjusting the tension. Uh, and for this reason, I would like to upgrade sergers to a serger that is more easy to adjust the thread tension on because I have seen other machines and it's not that hard to uh, adjust the tension on those. Well, I got this job um, to do an embroidery jo job for a client and I didn't have a embroidery machine. So I went to Walmart and I picked up the Brother SC625. Um, it's excellent for doing embroidery but after the project i decided that i wanted to try it for sewing it's good with sewing uh like undergarments because it has a triple um zigzag stitch on it and it also has precise millimeter measurements for your length and your uh width uh which is essential when you're making undergarments um and then another thing i like about that machine is you can step down the speed for a beginner um However, I would say that I don't like that sewing machine for sewing and I seldom use it for sewing because uh, one, it doesn't hold its place. Like when you turn off your machine and turn it back on, it doesn't keep your settings and you have to reset it every time. Um, and then two, the needle plate is extremely hard to read. Um, and once you get a large piece of fabric underneath there, you can't even see the needle plate. Um, and then you can't use a seam guide because you can't use any uh, magnets near the computer. Uh, so those are the two main things. But then also you can never use up your bobbin thread to the end of the bobbin because it the machine will give you a notification that says that bobbin's almost empty and it stops you from sewing. Uh, and the last thing I would say that I don't like is that the thread winds underneath the bobbin sometimes and it will get stuck down inside of the machine um, and it once you've done that it's extremely hard to get that thread out of your machine uh, and last but not least it is a computerized machine so once the machine is broken it's broken uh, typically you can't get any replacement computer parts for an old computerized sewing machine so I'll just drive it until it doesn't work anymore and then it's just done um if you're okay with that then that's fine but i guess the lesson in this is that you cannot really spend too much money on a computerized machine because the life of it is the life of it it's not like it's going to be a machine that you're going to keep for 35 years and pass on to your grandkids after I got this machine and had already sold that um, Janome Sewist, I purchased a Bernina 1010 once again off Craigslist. Uh, it makes a beautiful stitch and I had always dreamed of having a Bernina. It makes that beautiful stitch. It ha probably has the best stitch out of any of the sh machines that I have. However, it's very difficult to get into that sewing machine for servicing. And it has like a, once you get into the machine, there's a spot split back plate on it and you could only take off the plate on the side of the uh of where your light is and you can't take it off on the opposite side because they have actually run many of the functions of the machine through that plate 
Uh, so it's really not meant to be a uh, service except for to a certain extent. Uh, and that's something I didn't realize when I purchased the machine. Um, and then also replacement parts for that particular machine are very, very expensive. Uh, so those two things have led me to view that machine as a great machine to use for the here and now. But long term, um, I don't see that as a machine that would be easy to maintain simply because of the cost and the difficulty of taking it apart to service it. I became pretty much addicted to using Craigslist and I found a deal on there that I couldn't pass up and it was the Kenmore 1941. That machine is my favorite machine out of all the machines that I have because it has a great stitch. It's not quite as good as the Bernina, but it's almost there. And it is super easy to service. Um, and it just sews beautifully. Um, the two things that I dislike about it are one, the buttonhole, which it has a horrible cod gear buttonhole. And I just used it one time and then threw it in the drawer and never used it again. Um, when I do sew on that machine, I usually do manual buttonholes because that's just the easiest way to do it. Um, the second thing I dislike about the machine is it has a bed on it, but um, it's difficult to get to the bobbin from there. So you have to lift up part of the bed and then there's a door that you have to open before you can even get to the bobbin. And those are the only two things that I dislike about the machine. And I guess you could say that the lesson in the Kimmo per, um, machine that I purchased is that Sometimes the cheaper thing can be the better thing because that Kenmore for me feels like a better machine than the Bernina, even though the Bernina has a better stitch because it has more longevity. Um, and I know that I can get parts cheap. I can repair it easily and it's never given me a problem. So I hope that um, the machines that I review with you have helped you out in some way, um, that the information has helped you out in some way, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.